Some of you might remember in one of our videos a while back when we put out a notice to our viewers and patrons to see who might want to come down and help out as crew on Sophisticated Lady for a while. Well, this is Jeff and he's one of the ones who put in a video that we reviewed and ultimately invited down. So let's let him introduce himself to you guys the same way he did us. Hi there, Rick and Madalena. I'd like to introduce myself. My name is Jeff Green. I live close to Ottawa, Ontario in the country with my girlfriend and our three dogs. First of all, I'd just like to say that I've followed Sophisticated Lady for seven years now. I love the blog. I watch other shows too, like Delos. I love the episode where you show Brian how to surf a center console dinghy. That was hilarious. Only a Canadian named Rick would do that. I'd like to tell you a little bit about myself. I'm a retired letter carrier for 35 years. I've been retired for two years now. I've always dreamed of sailing. It's always been one of my big things. Uh, I'm a father of three, which are all grown adults now. So Madalena, I'll be able to help you out a little bit there. Um, I'm also a jack of all trades. I do a little of everything. My cars don't go into the shop unless it's warranty work. Um, I've always wanted to sail four years ago. My girlfriend and I went and got our skipper certification at the Britannia uh, Yacht Club in Ottawa. We were looking into buying a, a cruising sailboat, but unfortunately COVID happened and we settled on a 27 foot cruiser that we kept in the St. Lawrence. But like any boat, there's always boat jobs to be done. I love adventure. I love the outdoors. I love ATVing and motorcycles and snorkeling, of course, which is gonna be very important for all that filming. I also love to cook, but Madalena, I still want you to show me how you do your sushi. I like to play guitar also. I don't know if you have one on board and it's a little big to bring mine down. I pack light, so maybe I can bring some stuff down, supplies that you need. Um, my only fans are my dogs when I play guitar, so that's not, that's not too good. Uh, my dream was to retire on a sailboat. Uh, but right now, my girlfriend is still has two years left to do it. So I thought this would be a fantastic way to get my feet wet. And that would be a big thing and make her feel a lot better that she knew that we could do it out on the open waters. Uh, so in closing, I just want to say I got my logbook. I got my passport. I'm double vaccinated. Oh, and I am a non-smoker, by the way. And I also have my beautiful supporting girlfriend who's allowing me to go on this adventure if you choose me. So, all I need now is the time and the place, and let's do this. All right, thanks for your consideration. Bye. And the next thing you know, Jeff is down here drilling holes in Sophisticated Lady. Okay, so today we're in the heat of a big one. <laughs> this, this is a project we've been working on for a long time and it's all coming to fruition now because we have all the components and we are basically gutting and replacing the entire water system. You guys will remember this is the cabinet that used to house the water system right here. This is still the guts of the system that we're about to remove but we've already taken out all the cabinetry and this is the inside of the new cabinet that we started building last season, you remember. And it was for this express purpose that we were going to move all of this water system to the other side of the cabinet and install the new desalinator right here. So we've just received our new Zen 100. And this is a high capacity electronic metered system to update and replace our last system. Because the Zen 50, you remember we installed a year or so ago, it's worked amazing. We've been using it every single day 
on seawater in the Anchorage, even the whole time we were here in lockdown, and it never failed us. It was amazing, and it runs off solar power. This one, the exact same thing. It's one of the most efficient ones on the market. It will produce 25 gallons per hour, 100 liters per hour, at a rate of 400 watts power consumption. Okay, so that's more than adequate to run off solar panels, no problem at all. Our lithium bank will run it for hours and hours and hours, and basically it's going to keep up with our new water, our needs, as we increase the size of our family on the boat and our crew, because we're probably going to have two longer term crew that will come on board at some point, and we've got baby on board now as well, so we're going to use a lot more water. We've got our freezer here, but you remember this is why I built this cabinet because we wanted to have the reserve storage space for long-term travel for storing extra food reserves. It is going to go right into this cabinet. I've designed it so it will fit in here just perfectly after we remove and, move and reinstall all the water system over there. This is going to be the new barrier, so the Zen 100 creates the barrier between the two we just finished roughing in our complete support here, and this has to be very strong. It's got supports all the way down and across, and braced at both sides. And it is there to carry the weight, and also lock it in from moving. So we have braces on both sides to lock it in, and then once we're finished, we'll have supports across the top at both sides as well to make sure that it never moves. It'll be bolted right into these bulkheads. This new bulkhead here is going to be through bolted to the floor, through bolted to here, and through bolted to the new dining table on this side because this is all three quarter inch heavy dew plywood as well. This is part of our same project. I know you guys have seen it here unfinished for a long time because we've been waiting for certain components to get together. Now we have our new door we just finished. So this is what we've been working on. You can see we designed this to be an extra storage cabinet as well. So we've got lots of extra storage available in here, but we needed to have a front face put on it. This is all solid teak, just put together, and now we're just going to bolt this into position to cover this all up. And the whole thing is going to be covered in new teak. We have teak trim for everything. So it's going to be a beautiful cabinet when it's finished. So we're really looking forward to getting that all done. And it's all coming together at the same time. We couldn't finish this cabinet till we finished this one, and you know, it's just like a catch-22, but everything has to come together at the same time, and today, is when we start ripping this out. We've gone through all of our fittings because remember the problems I was having with all the French fittings? That's these little buggers right here. And look how many of them are right here. Every single one of those is just an explosion or a bad day waiting to happen. And I've not been able to replace them. I've had to splice in some different ones sometimes, but they're not the exact same size either and they tend to leak or crack. They just don't adapt well together. So now we're going to convert the whole system over to PEX tubing and fittings. And it's all going to be using these brass fittings right here. We've got elbows, inline connectors, T-fitting connectors, shutoffs, everything. And these are all actual PEX connectors. And we've got all the locks for them, all the, the tools to install them with. And that's what we're going to install today. So we're going to take all of these lines out. These are the three pressure lines outputs off the pump. So they're going to come out and we're going to move them over to there and each one with its own shutoff now instead of just being... Because right now if we have a leak anywhere in the boat in one corner, you have to shut off the whole boat. You have no water anywhere. So for the sake of installing three of these, one on each one of these outputs, if we have a leak in one corner of the boat, we just shut that corner off. And now we can still use water in the rest of the boat until we get that problem sorted out and fixed. So that's going to be a big improvement right there. But the basic components of the system, this is our freshwater pump right here. This is the pre-charge pump for our reverse osmosis water maker, and that's the drinking water purification system. That's separate from the desalinator. That's just for consumable water that we drink and use for cooking. This is the manifold for the three tanks on the boat, the inlets. So we have three different tanks and each one has its own shutoff. Now we've not used the aft tank since we've used the desalinator because we've been planning on taking out the big stainless tank in the back and converting it to diesel storage instead of water storage. Because in the front we can store 200 gallons between the two tanks of fresh water. That's more than enough when we have a desalinator backing the system up. So. We only have 100 gallons of fuel storage for diesel right now, but we're going to increase that to 200 gallons just by changing that second tank in the back of the boat over to diesel. So that's going to be this one. We're not going to use that one for water anymore. We're going to cut that one off and seal it. This one, these two here are going to come off and have also shutoffs put on them. And this will become the new manifold or source selector for which tank we want to use or which tank we want to fill. So that's what we're going to start working on today. 
Everything here is going to get cut out. You can see the pipes all run down through the floor and up around the side of the boat. And we need to track each one of these back here, find out which one is which, and then start putting valves on them and shutoffs. Did you just cut something? Yeah, this uh, strap holds all the tubing together. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, don't worry, I didn't cut any packs or any of the French stuff. But I was noticing here, Rick, yeah. maybe we can uh, just undo these connectors here instead of fighting them and then they'll just slide right out. That's just for one, that's just, we're not going to touch that one. Yeah, well, the other ones, there's the other ones here too, there's more. Did something just drip when you did that? I just because the dust fell off. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's a splice to the other washroom then, so that must be where the cold water feed is. But yeah, where's the flashlight? Those ones we don't need to touch. Look, my friend. My friend. Oh, thanks. Okay, so only two of them have T-fittings, right? Those two right there? Yeah. Right, okay, so the one with red? That's the hot. That's the hot. So it's coming from back there from the hot water tank. The other one is going to be one of these lines right here that's going up and going to the back washroom and teeing off to this washroom. So yeah, that's what you just found there. That is a tee. So we don't need to touch those, but we are going to cut that line after the tee down here and then run it to our shutoff. So that one is actually the one that feeds the hot water tank also, and I'm sure back here it tees off to the, set, the cold water side in the back bathroom on the port side. So yeah, we're not going to touch those tees, not yet. I, yeah, I don't like touching any of those things. <laughs> but having said that, maybe we're just going to replace them with uh, brass tees. I hate to fix anything that's not broken, but I know sooner or later they are going to break. They all do. So what we just discovered is that we can actually heat up that black, or sorry, the gray tubing and expand it over the T's, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, that's an option. But for now, we need to start with the inlets. So we need to source these two inlet lines back. So we're going to cut them right at the floor here and find out which ones they are and pull them up. And then we'll run them to their first T's over there. We'll get them labeled and then we'll start working on the, the discharge sides, the high pressure. Now, the first thing we can do is cut off the tank we're not going to use, pull it through and trace it. But what we want to do first is uh, we've got the Zen 100 set up. It's set up, it's working in this location. We know how it's going to be now. Now we need to just remove it so we can get access to these lines easily. And the amazing thing is all of this going on with this little guy right here. <laughs> yep, daddy's babysitting. Mommy had some errands to run today, so Daddy's looking after RJ. And I can't tell you, he's been like the perfect little baby. I hesitate to jinx it, you know, don't want to do that, but yeah. He sleeps like a rock, sleeps through the night, just <laughs> whimpers a little bit when he's hungry. Kind of like Daddy. <laughs> nope, been a great little boy so far. But he's here hanging out with the guys while we work on our projects. <laughs> Yeah, and in case you're wondering, that piece weighs about 120 pounds. <laughs> it's got some substance. Okay, I'm going to disconnect the pump. Can you get some black electrical tape? Yeah. Okay, so that's going to be our power cables. This will probably remain power to the pump right under here. This is going to be a 12 volt line. We're not going to use this for the desalinator anymore. This used to be the desalinator because it needs more power. But now the desalinator, the new one is 24 volts. So we're actually going to hook it up directly to the 24 volt bank on its own wire. All right, this is our brine discharge. Water pump inlet and outlet. Okay. Here's our water pump. So that's the wires on there. This is the heart. Okay, yeah, that's the ground and the positive. 
Okay, so that's going to go over to your side. We've got the accumulator tank. This is going to have to move. This is the bilge pump. And it's going to have to go straight underneath the floor, so we're going to clear everything from the floor here. So that's okay, we can take this elbow out, we'll reconnect that, get rid of my old splice. You got a Phillips screwdriver? And this is the booster pump for the reverse osmosis water maker. So it increases our boat pressure. So the boat runs at about 40 to 50 pounds per square inch. And that will run a reverse osmosis system, but they prefer higher pressure, up around 80 to 100. So this gives us 100 pounds of, of pressure uh, straight into the water maker. Okay. Here's one of the screws. That's the second one. That's the front port water tank. Well, at least our road. Time to put the water project on hold for a little bit. I had some special SSL t-shirts made up for some friends that were about to leave the island. So I had a very important appointment to keep. Uh, bidding farewell to another friend, Capitan Quintiaro, leaving the island this weekend. I guess he's been reassigned to back to mainland, so maybe today we meet the new Porto Captain, Capitan de Porto. <laughs> Uh -huh. Wow, oh, I don't want to touch you. <laughs> you are so oh, white. Very yeah. well, thank Hi, you. nice to meet you. <laughs> I'm not sure how I managed an invitation to this event, but there were four decorated Capitans in attendance, including Captain Cerna here that you may remember was the one that gave me my Armada Captain's hat last year. Thank you again, sir. We also had the Admiral in attendance, so this was a very special event for old Captain Rick to be extended an invitation. Believe me, and I appreciate it. Thank you very much, gentlemen. Presentación y reconocimiento de los señores capitanes de Puerto, de San Andrés y Providencia, entrantes. Eso para hablar mi capitán. Buenos días, capitán de Corbeta, Marco Antonio Castillo Charris, capitán de Puerto San Andrés, entrantes. Buenos días, pues relajo. Permiso, mi capitán, para entregarle la capitanía de Puerto San Andrés al capitán de Corbeta, Marco Castillo. Permiso para recibir la capitanía de Puerto San Andrés, entregado a las consignas y novedades. Buenos días, quedan relevados, capitán Quintero, clausuro por el trabajo que ha hecho liderando y guiando a toda esta bella gestión y Castillo, una gran responsabilidad. Bendiciones en este nuevo reto. Muchas gracias. Gracias. Capitan Quintero, from the private sector, I wish to thank you for your service in San Andres, and we certainly wish you all the best in your next assignment. I wish I could have stuck around for the festivities after, but I had another important engagement to keep. Finished up that event just in time. Now, Aeropuerto. New friends arriving. <laughs> hey! <laughs> We made it! Hey, no, that's not mine. <laughs> not my you guys might remember our longtime friends and patrons, Rick and Lisa Boyd. Well, yep, they're here for another round. <laughs> everything good? Oh, yeah. Doing really good. You didn't lose your luggage, so you got everything good? Yeah. Okay, perfect. Now, this is Jeff. 
Two friendly birds that just arrived from Canada last week. Hey, Alright, they tricked me. But this nice man just came and let me know that the international departures gate or arrivals gate is down this end of the airport. So, here they are. <laughs> My parents, all the way from Canada. <laughs> oh, look at you guys, you're so cute. <laughs> you know what happened today? Uh, oh, I love you, I love you, I love you. It's the first American Airlines flight ever into San Andreas. Yeah, I think I knew that somehow, but. Surprised you guys were on it. That's good. Hello, hello. So they got a band in their plane. Go cool, cool. dancing and everything. Finally, you're taking me home. Finally. Yes. <laughs> Where is baby Ricardo? Where's the little papoose? Right over there. Okay. We go. Camera action. It's been a long time since I was here. I know. A couple of years. Almost exactly to the day. Are you ready? Hello. Everybody's here. Yeah. Better put the boobies away. He's already <laughs> eating again. He's always eating. <laughs> He's a moor. <laughs> He's hungry always. Yeah. You have company. I arrived there. Yeah, first time you see Grandma and Grandpa. Hello. Hi, sweetie. Hi, you are coming. Come on in. <laughs> Hi Jack, how are you? Hi, happy to see you. Hi baby. Hey Ricardo. Hey, look at Ricardo. 